Hey, welcome back to the second episode of Foodies, guys. Foodies, foodies, Ooh. foodies. Oh, guys, there's a message. I didn't even notice this until right now. Two foodies on the table. As last week's foodie. There's three foodie, of us, though. There, there are three of us. Wait, what? You said two foodies. Uh, hi, ha. Oh. Oh. T.O. Wait, ha, ha. Colin. I know they had a blast on the first one, so I'm excited to see what this is all about. I really don't have any, any clue. So as the Why video of last week, I'm going to... Oh, uh, that's right, you were last week. I, I'd like to say, Joe, since this is the first time you've been on the show so far, expect interesting things. Jordan, you're the booty! I'm the booty! Ah! Kylo Ren! We need to stop putting Kylo Ren behind people. I feel like I am the most expertly selected foodie there is. And no matter what, I'm going to be able to pick something beyond anything any other foodie could actually pick because, you know, I'm better than any other kind of foodie because I'm the best foodie. Jordan being the foodie, uh, we are all good. This camera, um, this backup camera is completely useless. You're so. going to turn left onto East, Arkansas Avenue. Arkansas. Arkansas. <laughs> probably one of the most interesting and fun parts of foodies is navigating to the restaurant. So now, Jordan, are you going to be a benevolent foodie or a malicious foodie? Either he could be a benevolent foodie or a, 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 a tyrant foodie. He's not going to just get some crazy thing on the menu just for the hell of it. I am a man of benevolence. You just ran that red light. Why would she direct us into traffic? Uh, this is really bad so traffic. It's 6 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> now pay attention, everyone, because I am introducing a first twist of foodiness. Ooh, a foodie curveball? A foodie curveball. I figured it'd be a good idea to throw in a little bit of a mix-up to the guys by making one of the appetizer plates a special plate that if they end up finishing it, then they will get to choose any kind of mixed drink on the menu. Because there's always cool mixed drinks where we're going, and I figured it'd give them an opportunity to try something out on their own. You know, give them the choice. But only if they got that last thing on the plate. Oh, nice. Okay. Free drink. Why are you, why are you squinting like that? Right it's refreshing. Reflecting from the, the rear view right into my eyes. Oh, I, I have yeah, sunglasses, I don't know why I didn't bring them. Yeah. Oh. Jordy now. <laughs> Joe glasses. Wait, go up, go up, up, up. Right Jesus there. fucking right, Christ. Right. See, wooden coops right there, it's that little one. I was oh confused. My goodness. Oh, this is it right here. We're going to this is it? Yep. The Rebel Restaurant? Oh, it's so tiny! Oh man, this is a hole in the wall right That's here. That's really cool. There was nothing around it. It was just like this little shoe box out in the middle uh, on the side of the highway. Hey, that actually looks like a cool little place in the middle of nowhere that I should go try out. It was just the only place like it on the block. It, it didn't look like much, but it looked like a place that had a really cool vibe to it. First off, Lord of the Rings pinball. It definitely really had a cool vibe. I really like the fact that they grow their own herbs and they had a bunch of cool stuff behind the bar. And yeah, they had pinballs. Pinballs. Pinball. Yeah, no, it seemed like a cool place. It was awesome. I knew it was, you know, a place to, to chill. So we arrived at the restaurant. We poured our waters in our monkey pitcher. <laughs> First steps, ordering drinks for everyone. Uh, we've turned the menu face down, so we're not looking at it yet. Joe is going to get a Melvin Killer Bees beer. I don't know if you'll like this, but this is just something that's going to be way out of anything you've tried before. Sure. The Zingu, which is a Brazilian black lager. So I got Joe the Melvin Killer Bees because he likes bees. So I figured it's always cool to try out a honey ale of some sorts. But I figured Dan had never had a black lager before. I don't know Are if you he's- Are you talking about Dan? Hey. You're talking about me. They're at the window right now. You're talking about me? I don't like things that are like incredibly salty with like large chunks of grain, salt, or sugar or something like that. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing that I can't have. I'm pretty traditional these days, I guess. Um, as long as it's not like crazy animal parts or 
something. For appetizers, we're gonna have the chili and cheese dog popcorn. We're gonna have the fried shrimp and eggplant dim sum. And then the pickle whatever of the day. I don't know what it is. It's not pickled. It's, it's some kind of pickled veggie. So for entrees, Dan, I got you the beet gnocchi. And then Joe, I got you the faux gras char sebao. Do you like faux gras? Uh, it's like liver, I think. Oh, I don't know. Goose liver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's really, really cool. cool. It's interesting. Um, pickles to start. Nice. So we some soy fermented carrots, some hop and uh, dill pickle cucumber, and then just some pickled eggs. Hey, awesome. This is Bo, by the way, you guys. This is his place. Hi, Bo. Nice to meet you. Joe. I'm glad we all got beer together. I'm going to try the uh, fermented uh, carrot. Tofu fermented carrot. Soy. Soy fermented carrot. The pickled fermented, what, what was the fermentation? Carrots fermented in soybean? Soy? That's pretty cool. That's spicy. I like the tang to it. Come on. Pickled stuff is interesting. Sometimes it can be really good. Sometimes it can just be kind of eh. And even like the cucumber pickles, they're really mellow and kind of buttery. The soy fermented carrots were delicious. That was my first pickled egg, which I never thought I'd ever like, but they were delicious. But the ones that they had, they were pretty cool. Never had a pickled carrot before, so that was very interesting. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> now, cramming all of them in my mouth, because I thought it might be that dish thing that Jordan was talking about. That was a mistake. I didn't want to swallow it, but I had nowhere to spit it out, and I didn't want to spit it all over the plate, so I committed and I, I ate it all. Thank you. This one's one of the weirder ones, but not the weirdest. Okay. We changed our menu like every like month or so. Two popcorns ago was one of the weirder ones. We did like a Mexican Chex mix, but had uh, crickets and grasshoppers. <laughs> oh man. So, okay. Enjoy. Thank you. So these are the dehydrated hot dogs. Yeah, I think. I see some green onion. The chili cheese hot dog popcorn thing was very interesting. It was like a deconstructed hot dog, they put it, because it had the popcorn and some little refried beans, or so some pinto beans that were fried, different sauces, not sauces, seasonings, and then the dehydrated hot dog. The pinto beans in it were awesome, and the and like the actually chili cheese mix powder and the popcorn, and even the green onion was great. <sighs> The chili cheese popcorn was delicious. Having a little bit of everything in that bowl together, I totally, it was, I think it was a win. See, I love, I, I love that we're doing this show now because we've had some amazing, like, the two places we've gone so far have been so great. Yeah. Yeah. So who next? Oh, nice. It's going too, but I like you guys, so see you the next one. Oh, oh thank, you so thank you so much. He likes us. I was right. here dim sum. So I selected the shrimp dim sum as the appetizer that's going to be a little special, special plate so that the person that finishes that appetizer is going to be the one that wins the opportunity at the drink. This is like the notable shrimp and rice coating and stuff like that with some like soy sauce. And it's so tantalizing, I almost bit it while you were talking. <laughs> it's like your back out. Yeah, I'm gonna use my hot stand. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Holy crap. It's really good. Man, I like things that have like a really soft component, but when you bite into it, it has a nice like fried top crunch. Delicious. Joe is still chewing. He wins that plate. What? Hell yeah! You I'm took not... longer to chew than anyone else. Therefore, you finished the plate last. <laughs> and Joe wins. There was a there was a bit of discrepancy at the time. I don't know. I think Jordan just. Gave it to me. Who was the first to finish, though? No, he finished it off by. That was such a backwards race that I didn't realize that I. You, you weren't thinking about it. You should have slowed your chew down. Get some. Dim some. Losing, you know, it, it, it. Dan deserves to lose, and I'm glad to see him do so. If there's one thing I know about Dan is that he deserves to lose. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Deserves to lose. What are you saying about me? I it was cool. So it's called the Inara Sarah. It's Opir Oriental Gin, Grand Poppy Bitter Liqueur, Krupnik Spited Honey Liqueur, Lemon Syrup Bitter Cube, Trinity Bitters, and it's served on the rocks. I knew the second that Joe won that free drink that he was going to pick something cool because he has, always has pretty awesome taste and likes to explore a little bit, especially when it comes to the mixed drink realm. This is the Inara Sarah. It's, like I said, gin. I think there's a... Uh, Ooh, I don't know. Here you go, Jordan. Set it down. Oh. <laughs> 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 
That's wonderful. <laughs> Please try it. The, so the after flavor is amazing. <laughs> That tastes like so cool. how I want colognes to taste. <laughs> yeah. So it was this gin drink, and it had a very upfront like grapefruit flavor, kind of like a you know grapefruit juice almost. All of the the bitters and everything combined in there, the flavors. It almost it tasted like aftershave smells or like shaving. No, not not aftershave. Uh, shaving cream, which sounds kind of gross, but if, if you were to taste it, like it, it it was really bright in your mouth and like a very unique and classy flavor. <laughs> So for Joe, I decided to get him that faux gras pork bun thing, I can't remember the exact name of it. Dim sum pork bun filled with a little bit of something special. And if you haven't had faux gras before, it's a very interesting experience that I figured it would be a cool one for Joe. Dan got the beet gnocchi. It didn't seem anything that was too crazy far out, but I know that he likes beet stuff, beet pickled stuff, and gnocchi is kind of cool and interesting dish to try out, so just another no-brainer. Is that the gnocchi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. You to the end. Alright, this is every that's a good bite. This is bad. The let the flavor combo is mesmerizing. He's in the hyperbolic time chamber. <laughs> With everything? Oh my god. Yeah. That good that's really good. It was it was good. It was tasty. It was good. So there? I'll come over and talk to you guys after you guys are done eating. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was kind of like a Polish sausage or German sausage twist on a Mediterranean dish, it seemed. It was really, it was really good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Very herby sausage. Oh! <laughs> oh. This is in sesame donut. Yeah. With meat in it or the liver. <laughs> the brain is amazing because. All, it's, all I hear is goose liver, goose liver, goose liver, goose liver. Probably the most tender meat I've had, and I don't really taste anything interesting. It's like a honey, like a honey fennel duck meat. The goose was really tender, and it was a great barbecue. <laughs> See, that's what, that's what kind of evolves. Like, you got your traditional restaurants that will prepare traditional dishes. But the newest thing is kind of like in Ratatouille. Never seen it. What? Have you seen Ratatouille, Joe? Scott Mills. I was talking about him outside. He did some of the backdrop art for that. So it's coming full circle. Go on. Have you seen it? Oh no. You haven't seen Ratatouille? Oh my goodness. But everyone loves it. I've, I've always heard good things. It's, it's a great it? movie. But basically, the rat is trying to describe how you can have one thing and you can have the other thing, and they're two separate flavors. But if you combine them, it creates a whole new spectrum of flavors and it unlocks a whole new realm of possibility in the culinary arts. Well, That's yeah, I know this... that. I'm not a dipshit. <laughs> I don't need to watch a movie starring Patton Oswalt to find that out for it. It's a really good movie. Who played the rat? Patton, Patton Oswalt. Oswalt. <laughs> <laughs> so we were queried. We were queried. I think we were queried. Queried. We were queried if we had room for dessert. This is our housemate Snorches. What? So Jason, our bar manager, who's not here today, also has a beard because we're in fucking Denver. <laughs> <laughs> he makes basically like his housemate version of Fireball. Oh, but it's oh I almost got that drink. <laughs> it's made of like Intra Reyes uh, chili liqueur, um, four roses, cinnamon bitters. I don't know, some other secret ingredients. Do you get to do one with us? Oh yeah, I completely forgot mine. This is the alligator skin flask. You heard about it? It's on the menu, it says it's an alligator skin flask. So it comes out of the flask. That's really neat. <laughs> Cheers guys. Yeah, Cheers. Thank you for a wonderful day. Thank you for having us here. Oh yeah. It was really cool that the one of the owners came over and decided to take a shot of their homemade fireball with us. I love fireball. So the second he brought that fireball, homemade fireball out in that gigantic alligator skin flask, I was like, I'm home now. I'm home. I want to come back to this place every single week. A normal fireball, it just feels like a headache going down. It's just very kind of like has a sharp sugar. It was really good. It wasn't like regular fireball that just tastes cheap. It was very depthy in its whiskiness and had some bitters in there and then the chili had a little bit of heat at the end so it's pretty cool but this one was more aromatic and 
and like you could appreciate the cinnamon rather than it just kind of scorching your tongue or whatever. Man. Thank you, Rebel. Thank you, Rebel. Rebel Plants. It was awesome. Rank you, Thebel. I have to say, after the experience here, the awesome staff, the pretty phenomenal and unique dishes that they've had out here, I'm going to have to give a rating of 9 out of 10 goose livers because this is pretty awesome. Overall, it was. It was pretty, pretty bang, and I want to go back just because you know he's just sketching with food, or he and Dan, you know, the, the owners are just sketching with food. Overall, really great vibe of the place. Uh, Rebels, I, I would go back to again and again and again. Everything was awesome. Everybody was awesome. For recommendations, it's kind of hard to give any for this restaurant because they have such an such an aggressive, rotating menu that is never the same. All these new crazy different recipes that they come up with very frequently. So I'd say if you go there, just go for the unknown. Find stuff that looks kind of strange or different or is using a really cool, interesting recipe. I don't think you can really go wrong with anything. So just try out what makes you go like, huh, that looks interesting. And it's gonna be a great choice. But a huge thanks to Rebel Restaurant for having us over there. It was very delicious and Hopefully we'll be back sometime soon to try out the next rotation of interesting dishes. Well, we're on a roll with foodies so far. <laughs> really Please don't choice. take us anywhere scary stuff. Yeah, now, now it's like it's going to be just a downhill crash. The second step pitch, pitch, pitches a place that's not great. I know you're working your way back to Casa Bonita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, always, all roads lead to Casa Bonita. <laughs>